Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, the annual Career Expo was this week. Some students are wondering if the cold will ever end. And in sports, the men's basketball team clinched a, at least a share of the Summit League title. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. I'm Bryn Nelson. And I'm Kayla Reamer. Three NDSU students were arrested and charged with drug-related crimes. Campus police arrested Austin Clem, Cody B. Johnson, and Hunter Schleski on Thursday after a routine traffic stop turned up drugs. 19-year-old Schleski was charged with possession of marijuana, with possession to sell, possession of heroin, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Clem and Johnson, who are also 19, were charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. According to Valley News Live, Lieutenant Greg Stone says finding heroin on campus is unusual. The traffic stop was made on 700, 700 block, 1700 block of 16th Street North just before 3 p.m. Big changes are in store at the Memorial Union dealing with security. Plans are designed for the installation of a new surveillance system which would involve 55 to 60 new cameras in the building. For the last almost two years, there have been no cameras in the Memorial Union other than the bookstore and the art gallery. The new cameras will be monitored by police 24-7. The university police already have a campus-wide surveillance system, but they will add it to the, the Memorial Union to it. The estimated cost is between $75,000 to $100,000, the administrator told the Spectrum. This week, students packed the Fargo Dome for this semester's NDSU Career Fair. Students got a chance to meet with potential employers, gather information to obtain jobs and internships for the summer. This year, day one consisted of agricultural, business, and liberal arts majors, while day two was for engineering, design, science, and technology students. More than 200 employers attended and predicted 1,400 students participated. Sponsored by the NDSU Career Center, the career fair helped seniors with resumes and even posted a video to help students prepare for the fair. NDSU is currently fighting against Brigham Young University in a contest to determine whose school has the best fans. The contest is in its Elite Eight section and NDSU might not make it to the Final Four. NDSU defeated Portland in the Sweet 16 round but is struggling to stay with BYU. Voting for the Elite Eight ends on March 2nd and on March 3rd the Final Four round begins. The championship round starts on the 10th and goes until the 16th when the competition for the best fans in the countries are crowned. Voters can visit the NCAA.com backslash six fan for, for, or tweet hashtag six fan hashtag NDSU to vote. Women's Week returned to NDSU with several events that took place on campus. That brought awareness to women's accomplishment and perspectives. This annual event offers presentations for students, faculty, and staff, as well as the FM community. More than 40 people turned out in the Memorial Union on Tuesday to listen to a group of NDSU researchers share their findings on the hookup culture and sexual double standards at NDSU. The event was one of the 11 Women's Week events, and other presentation topics included unattainable ideals of beauty, feminist theory, and sexual violence to get research out there that are talking about uh, women, women in the university, women in the world. Something that a lot of people don't think about are that when we talk about Women's Week, it's not trying to be like Women's Week, not Men's Week, um, but we need men to create equality within our institution at NDSU and, and across the world. Women's Week ends tomorrow afternoon with a presentation from Heather Fisher. It will focus on women leaders in America who have paved the way for women today. Coming up after the break, the cold weather, will it ever end? This and more after this week's seven day forecast. If sports talk is your game, then check out Game Point on SUTV 84. The latest and controversial issues are tackled by the SUTV sports panel. Game Point. 2.30 p.m. every Friday on SUTV 84. <laughs>
Hey, I'm Mariah, and I'm at Bus because not only does it save me money, but with 20 different routes, it makes getting around Fargo much more convenient. I'm at Bus. Do you? You are watching SUTV 84, NDSU's student campus channel. To find out about the latest styles and trends, and to keep up on all the latest gossip, watch The Herd at 5 p.m. every Monday on SUTV 84. SUTV News is brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back to SU TV News. With the unavoidable, unavoidable busyness of the mid-semester, students may be wanting a break from it all. NDSU's theater program is currently showing their spring musical that can take you away from some of your real-life worries for at least a couple of hours. SU TV's Cassie Rolfing has more on the play and all the work behind the scenes that audience members don't see. Uh, Sweeney Todd is the story of, uh, of a man who's consumed by revenge. For their spring musical, the NDSU Theatre Department is putting on the play Sweeney Todd, Demon Barber of Fleet Street. But one who goes to the play may not realize how much work is put in to make it a success. If somebody were to actually sit down and figure out, based on like every single person involved, the hours that they've put into it, it would be astronomical and um, almost impossible to believe. The set has been getting put together. Uh, the design work has been happening uh, since early last semester, and so there's just been a lot of uh, a lot of work putting into this uh, on all sides of design and performance teams. Along with that, casting started back in November. Rehearsals began the Sunday before classes, and practices are going on four hours a day, four days a week. With so much going on for the play, it may not seem like anybody has any time for anything else. It really is a challenge to make sure that. I am able to get all my school work done, as well as all of these things that are absolutely important, but, you know, it's balancing. But to those in this production, the hours of tedious work are worth it in the end. And feeling that emotional connection that these people who have no connection to what you've done at all and are just seeing it for the first time, that makes it all worthwhile. And it can be transformative and it can be um, transportive. And that's, for me, it makes it all worthwhile. If you decide to go to the play and have already seen the Johnny Depp movie adaption, expect some differences. Like I've been telling a lot of people, um, a majority of our audience is probably going to be coming to see this show based off of, you know, knowing the, the Johnny Depp film that came out uh, a few years ago. And um, that's great because it's definitely, it's an aspect of, of what this musical is, but it's an adaptation. So when you come to this, you're going to be seeing a lot more music. There's a lot more story for some of the other characters. Cassie Rolfing reporting, SU TV News. The play opened today at 7.30, but there are also showings tomorrow and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. in Festival Concert Hall. Tickets are free to NDSU students with their Bison card. As March quickly approaches, it may have NDSU students wondering if the cold will ever end. This week alone, we've seen temperatures dipping into 20 below with wind chills 30 to 40 below. The National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center forecasts a below normal temperature for the rest of this month along with March, April, and May, which means we may not see an end to this weather anytime soon. While some are not happy about this, others don't seem to mind the weather. I'm upset. I'm looking forward to summer. Uh, I like swimming in the lake and I want it to be nice and green and warm outside. I think it's great. I want to increase the amount of time that I can go and play hockey. I mean. I can't play hockey if there's no ice and it warms up, so. Although these temperatures are below average, this hasn't been the coldest winter North Dakota has seen. In Fargo, the coldest recorded temperature by the National Weather Service for the month of February was negative 47 degrees. If your computer science classes are taking a toll on you, NDSU has a student organization that can lend a hand. The Association for Computing Machinery at NDSU has a wide range of members and interests. So even if you're not the most tech savvy, you can still have fun. 
There are many students who play video games. And then there are those who create them. At NDSU's Association for Computing Machinery, more commonly referred to as ACM, there are video game programmers, computer security researchers, and even enthusiasts of My Little Pony. Okay, so the six are the special interest groups. Each one of them has their own leaders, their own members. Uh, they're basically subgroups of the ACM. You know, we do com AI pro competitions, programming competitions. Um, we, you know, it's a big event. You know, we have to travel outside the state sometimes. Not only does ACM have different groups of interest, but they also create an open environment where anybody can come and hang out. Classmates, you know, just sometimes just go there. They want to know, you know, they want to need some help with some homework or with some project. Or they want to know if there's someone in turn doing some, you know, some project or some, some side project apart from school. And um, that's how, you know, I've met a lot of people. And people have had fruits that haven't had fruit in two years. If you find yourself looking for the ACM, you'd have to look no further than the Quinton Burdick Building, formerly known as the IAC, with an arcade cabinet, stocked fridge of drinks, and even snacks inside, it's no wonder students find the ACM is such a popular candidate for a student organization on campus. However, it's not just for students. One of the big benefits is the ACM library, and there, there's actually two sections to the library. One is, is the books, and there's a large number of kind of trade type books on almost every language. There's also um, a large number of courses so that you can complete courses in a broad range of topics. Adam Kempenick reporting. SU TV News. The ACM is open to everyone and membership costs $35 per year for students. Plenty more to come on this edition of SU TV News. After the break, we'll learn about an Olympic sport you can play right here in the FM area. You're watching SU TV 84, your home for to be determined NDSU's Comedy Improv Club, with new episodes every other week. Jitters is the NDSU Campus Community's Coffee Hub. Conveniently located right next to campus, Jitters Coffee has a wide range of amenities, including comfortable seating, Wi-Fi, and an assortment of beverages. Jitters is here to meet your needs, whether you're looking to relax and socialize or study in a rich, active environment. Be sure to make your way over for your morning brew, a bite at lunch, or for a break between classes. Get your fix only at Jitters. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top-of-the-line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your prize and pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Deke's Pizza. Prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at geekspizza.com or order with Deeks' easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU. Make Deeks your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deeks. Great pizza that won't empty your pockets. If sports talk is your game, then check out Game Point on SU TV 84. The latest and controversial issues are tackled by the SU TV sports panel. Game Point, 2.30 p.m. every Friday on SU TV 84. SU TV News is a production of the Bison Information Network in conjunction with North Dakota State University's Department of Communication Broadcast Program. For more information, go to www.ndsubin.com. Welcome back. Every year on April 15th, income taxes are due. As the deadline approaches, NDSU is offering a tax assistance program. Every Monday night from 6 to 9, students and community members head for the basement of the library to seek assistance with their income taxes. The Vita Tax Assistance Software Program has been around for 13 years and is led by a majority of student vol volunteers. One NDSU professor plays a key role in coordinating it's one of those this benefit. Feel good things, type of things. It makes me like tonight, I'm running around, pulling my hair out, 
kind of nervous, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go, ah, that was fun. If you're willing to get your taxes done by a student and it's a great opportunity to get them done early, um, uh, it's a great opportunity to get a better understanding of why your taxes are the way they are and to do them correctly. The number of income tax returns process can range anywhere from 40 to 75 a night. The assistance program will continue until March 31st. The only thing many students know about curling is what they see during the Olympics. What many don't know is that there actually is a lot of technique to the winter sport, and it can be played right here in the FM area. SUTV's Delaney Freer learns more. I am here at the FM Curling Club in Fargo with Kelsey and Christina, who are both members of the Fargo Curling Club. They are going to teach me today about how to play the sport. I have absolutely no idea what to expect at all. Looking at the rink here, I would guess that you're pushing those gray metal thingies and you try to get them to touch those black marks. Am I close? <laughs> you're trying to push the rocks. Um, you're trying to get them to the center, close as you can to the center of the circles. As Christina said, the purpose is to slide the granite stones, not metal thingies, across the sheet of ice closest to the center of the opposite target, called the house. Two teams of four players play eight ends, or rounds. An end is complete when each team has delivered eight rocks. Two sweepers rub the ice with their brooms to create a layer of water that affects the stone's speed. The team captain, called the skip, signs to the curler where they want the stone to go, adding strategy to the game. As the girls attempted to get me used to the ice and explained the game to me, I was surprised by how difficult it was to balance. We've only been doing the getting used to the ice stuff and I've already fallen. And so when we actually get to the curling part, that's going to be interesting. Thankfully, I'm not alone. I curled with my brother's team. He is five years older than me. And when you hit a rock when you're curling, it's called a burnt rock. And I was really young and I fell and I burnt the rock along with like three other rocks. <laughs> and he was like, you're done. Curling is also called chess on ice due to the strategy involved. You kind of have to know uh, what you're going to call a couple shots ahead of time and um, take into consideration what you think the other team's going to do when you're calling your shots. Well, my training has finished. They taught me everything I need to know about curling. Guys, how did I do? Good. Yeah, yeah you improved a lot. Delaney Free reporting, SUTV News. Head to the FM Curling Club located near the intersection of 45th Street South and 23rd Avenue South in Fargo to join a league if interested. If you didn't already know, Luke Bryan is coming to the Fargo Dome tomorrow night for his That's My Kind of Night tour featuring Cole Swindell and Lee Bryce. This week for Sidewalk Stampede, the two of us set out and asked students if they were planning on going to the concert and their thoughts about country music. Are you going to the Luke Bryan concert? Yes. Are you going to the one in Fargo? No, I'm actually going to Bismarck. Are you excited? Extremely. Who's your favorite country singer? Luke Bryan. I guess it works out then. Perfect. Okay. Did you know he was coming on Friday? I did know he was coming. I also knew that, yes. Are you guys big country fans? I, I, I can get down with a little bit of country every now and I'd put me from like medium to high country fan. Okay, so are you going to the Luke Bryan concert this weekend? I'm actually not going to the concert. Do you know Luke Bryan or do you listen to him? Um, not particularly. What? I know he sings country, but that's about all I know. What kind of music do you like? Um, I guess, I don't know, lots of music. I actually do like some country, but I'm, I don't really know Luke Bryan that well. I am not, unfortunately. Do you like country music, though? Yes, I do like country music. Who's your favorite artist? My favorite artist would actually be Lady Antebellum, and they were just here a couple weeks ago. Did you get to go to them? No, I didn't, <laughs> but I've seen them. Oh. Well, I just want to say that I'm very excited for the concert. I'm going to it, so. That'll be fun. But joining yeah. us now is sports reporter Colton Poole. So what do you have coming up in sports, Colton? Well, NDSU men's basketball clinched a share for the regular season conference title and have a shot to get an outright possession of it tonight. Uh, sports coming up after the break. The NDSU Bookstore where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more.
made by top-of-the-line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. I'm Mariah, and I'm at bus because not only does it save me money, but with 20 different routes, it makes getting around Fargo much more convenient. I'm at bus. Do you? Deke's Pizza. Prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at DeeksPizza.com or order with Deeks easy to use mobile app. NDSU, make Deeks your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deeks, great pizza that won't empty your pockets. <laughs> SU TV Sports is brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. Before their season started, the Bison men's basketball team was predicted by many to take the Summit League title for the first time in five years. On Saturday, NDSU had a chance to get closer to that goal in a conference showdown with South Dakota State at home. And the Bison Sports Arena was packed for this one. Going right to the first half, Taylor Braun heaves up a full court pass out to Marshall Bjorklund. Nothing fancy, gets the layup. Bison go up 9-2. Next, Jordan Dykstra casts up a three, finds the bottom of the bucket. Jacks would still trail 16-9 after that. The Bison would lead 33-18 at half. Bjorklund here somehow finds his balance, gets the reverse layup, and gets an and one. Bison go up 35-22. Trayvon Wright gets the rebound, slams it down. Bison increased the lead to 54 to 36. And again here, Corey Brown finds right again for the thunder and dunk. Bison go up 63 to 46. As NDSU would win the game 74 to 59 behind Trayvon Wright's 20 points and seven rebounds. Marshall Bjorklund had a big night as well, adding 18 points on 7-11 of shooting. The Bison held the S held SDSU's big man Cody Larson to just 11 points while forcing him to go with just three of 14 from the field. The Bison have secured at least a share of the Summit League regular season title. The Bison can clinch the outright regular season title with a win against South Dakota or Denver at home this weekend. NDSU and USD tip off at 7 p.m. on Thursday inside the BSA, while NDSU and Denver are also set to tip off at 7 p.m. on Saturday for senior night. This is the last time Bison fans can watch seniors Marshall Bjorklund, Trayvon Wright, Taylor Braun, Jordan Auberg, Mike Felt, and Fred Newell play at home. The NDSU women's basketball team fell to number 15 ranked South Dakota State 75-53 on a Saturday in, Summit League con in a Summit League contest. Shina Stevens led the Jackrabbits with a career best 18 points. The Bison fall to 6-21 overall with a 2-10 record in the conference. NDSU is back in action tonight in Vermilion, South Dakota for a conference game against South Dakota. Coming into last weekend, the Bison wrestling team had a, sh had a shot to be the regular season Western Wrestling Conference champs. They hosted Wyoming on Friday, where they lost a close match 16-17, to but with a win Sunday against South Dakota State, the Bison would have a chance to, to share the conference title. Let's go out back to the BSA, where it was senior day for the, for the Bison. It was the last match for them at the BSA. Stephen Monk right here gets three-point near fall on Alex Koser. He wins the match by a technical fall by 17-2. to two. Hayden Zilmer here, a huge takedown on John Nething the second. Two points for him, and later in the match, Zilmer would continue to dominate as he gets a three-point near fall. He wins the match by a technical fall 16-0. to zero. 
The, uh, NDSU would dominate and get the win over South Dakota State 32 to 12 and get a share of the Western Wrestling, Wrestling Conference dual title. They will have this week off before heading to Orem, Utah for the NCAA West Regional on March 8th. The North Dakota State men's club hockey team has been all about resiliency this season. Despite the low media attention, the Bison have proved to be a tough team after fighting their way to a 500 record. Playing in the American Collegian Hockey Association in Division I, the Bison start, started the season 0-5 but have gone 9-5 since November. Though their tenacity goes beyond the ice, as members have to practice as late as 9.30 p.m. miles away from NDSU campus just to get time on the ice together. While this may seem difficult for some, the Bison have relied on each other to make the most out of their chances. The give and take there. You know, the nucleus of, of, of our players are here for two to four years, and you can build around that, and we have done so. So, um, you know, and, and the guys get along great. They hang out all the time, and, and uh, that's real nice because you, you need that relationship amongst the teammates. Just building that com camaraderie. We're skating four, five nights a week, hanging out on the weekends, traveling together. I mean, you just build kind of a rapport with the guys, and it's pretty fun around the locker room and skating with them. The Bison will end their season on the road against returning ACHA national champion Minot State this weekend. While Coach Douglas said the challenge may be high for his team, he feels good about spoiling the party before MSU heads to nationals this year. Well, going back to wrestling, I bet it was very bittersweet to have their last match at the BSA. Certainly. Yeah, and it's, I can't believe they don't know where they're going to play next year yet. So. Right. But there's a new option to get tasty meals around campus. We'll tell you more about that after the break. More than 400 million people use Facebook to stay connected with family, friends, and colleagues. In addition to the millions of others who use Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Flickr for networking purposes. While Facebook and other social media sites are great tools to help you connect with friends and build networks, you should also be aware of the potential dangers associated with using these tools. So, let's talk tech. First of all, always be mindful of what you and your friends are posting online. Nothing online is private, no matter what security settings a website may boast. Anything posted online stays online. So take time to consider what you and your friends are putting online before you post it. For example, do you want your potential employers or your current boss to see embarrassing pictures that your friends have posted? There is also the question of how much information should you disclose on a social media site. Posting too much personal information could lead to lost job opportunities, harassment, internet stalking, and identity theft. Don't publicize information that the public doesn't need to know. Finally, you should think about who you want to see those things you've posted online by evaluating the appropriateness of the privacy settings on your social media site. It is recommended that you customize your settings such that only your close friends can see your personal information, such as your home address, email, and phone numbers. Ideally, this information should not even be online. Additionally, social media networks frequently update their security protocols, so be sure to review and update your security settings regularly. With these precautions, you will be well on your way to enjoying a safe and secure social networking experience. Welcome back. There are a lot of options for tasty meals around campus, but here is one that you may not have heard of. The 800 Cafe is now open for the rest of the semesters. Students get the chance, the opportunity to run their own restaurant after training during the fall semester on how to do it. The cafe is open every Thursday until May 8th from 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. in the room 312 of the Family Life Center. Every week, a different meal, yeah, including a beverage, is served. Things. Everything's from scratch. It's very good food. It's very high quality. Everything's fresh. The, fre the chicken, um, we bring in frozen, so it's, it's very good. And the fruits and vegetables, it's just everything is it's so good compared to like something you would find at a fast food restaurant. To reserve a table, contact Rhonda Clubbin at her email, which is rhondaclubbin at ndsu.edu. 
Well, thank you for watching this edition of SU TV News. Be sure to pick up a copy of The Spectrum and check us out on Facebook or Twitter. Also visit us at ndsubin.com for your chance to win some special prizes. Have a great night.